Well, welcome today to week number two of this series that we have called Covenant. We're so glad that all of you are here today, especially those who are watching, perhaps in the theater next door or online or maybe at one of our off-site campuses. We're so glad that you're along for the ride today. This series is powerful, six-week series. We'd love for you to join us for every single one. Today, we are honored to have a very special guest to teach us on relationships, probably one of America's leading experts on relationships, certainly an expert on leadership. He's actually known as America's leadership guru. Uh, you guys know him. He's authored about 60 books on leadership. He's a dear friend of our church. Uh, we work together on missions to train leaders around the world. But more importantly than all of that, John Maxwell has become such a dear friend to me personally, really uh, mentors me and stood with me during a really tough year this past year, as you guys know. I love him. I know you love him. And I want to get out of the way and let him teach us today. Would you please, at all of our campuses, give the absolute best welcome you've got for Dr. John Maxwell. Come on. Thank you. Thank you. It's so good to be here. I'm going to sit down with you. Let's get acquainted. My name is John. What's your name? <laughs> nice to meet you. Great to be with you, Chris. Tammy, oh my goodness. When he told us, everybody told us it was your birthday, and I, 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 I looked at you, and I looked at him, and I thought, oh dear God, <laughs> the man has married way above himself. <laughs> or or you know, when I lived in Georgia, they had an expression, he outpunted his coverage. <laughs> and it's, I, I know, because Martin, I've been married for 42 years. I outpunted my coverage too, buddy, too. I, 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 people look at her and they look at me and they say, You must be in sales. <laughs> <laughs> and I am, and I'm so glad to be here with you. And, and, <laughs> and I'm so glad to be with all the campuses and the online people here. And it, what a great church this is. Oh, worship, oh my. Do you have worship like this every week? Oh, wait, wait. folks, 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 when you go to heaven, you're going to want to come home on the weekend. <laughs> you're going to say, could, could I just go down the highlands? Just, I'll, I'll be back on Sunday night. I'll, I'll come back, but can I just go down? I'm so glad to be here, and, and I know you know this. I, I, I'm, the, I'm really privileged to know pastors and leaders and I do a lot of leadership work and training, and I, I know I, I, I'm privileged to speak in I have spoken in the greatest churches in America. And I think you know this. I know you know this. But Chris is an unusually anointed leader. And, 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 and folks, let me say, uh, anointed. And I just want you to know, I know. And just trust me on this. You have, there's not, there's not a church in America that has a better pastor or leader than Chris Hodges. And I just want you to know that. It's not a bad, not, not, no, no one, no one. Yeah, I, I love you. I love you, Chris. And, and I, I made a commitment to serve 10 people just to add value to them. And they're, they're bigger, better, faster than I am, that's for sure. And so I just kind of said, I want to serve 10 people. And he's one of them. That, and so whenever he says, John, come over and teach, I just say, well, come over and teach. And what do you want to talk about? And he tells me what to talk about, gives me the outline, tells me what to say. <laughs> tells me when to sh shut up and walk off stage. It's just, a, it's a, a, it, and I'm just, thank you for, thank you for having me and trust me with your people. Uh, I, there are books over here, and I signed all throughout the, the, the between the services. I will again afterwards. Uh, this is my newest book. Just, it, it just came out this week. It just came out, The Five Levels of Leadership, and uh, I, that's what I, that's what I teach. It's what I, I I'm passionate about, and um, the publisher wasn't going to put it out till next week, and I said, I told him, I said, you've got to put it out this weekend, because I'm going to Highlands. And I said, I want them to be the first to have the book. So you get the book today, read it this weekend, go to work on Monday, tell everybody about it, and then when they go to the bookstore and they find it this week, you can just say, you know, I was just with John at church the other day, and he stole all of my ideas. <laughs> so it's the five levels. It's out there. I'll, I'll sign these for you. Uh, the, my favorite project was the, is the leadership, Maxwell Leadership Bible. I've pastored for 25 years. And, and everything I've ever taught out of the word on leadership is in here. Over 600 uh, lessons on, on leadership, biblically. So if you love the word of God and you love leadership, if you pick it up, it'll just, it'll just be something to really kind of spark you as, as far as a Christian leader. 
And I brought this book because I was speaking on relationships called Winning with People. It's, it, it's kind of my Dale Carnegie book. It's, 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 it's just a, a book on people principles and how to, how to connect with people really well. And, and I know when I talk about winning with people, you don't need this book because you're already a, a leadership relationship guru. But how many of you know somebody <laughs> who they, this could be the gift that really saves the relationship. You know what I'm saying? You know, just get it for them and say, I was thinking of you, you know. <laughs> but it, it's a great book on relationships. And then finally, I have, a, I, I, people love this little book. It's called a Leader's Heart. And it's just, uh, uh, you know, read, read one minute a day. It's, it's a page a day uh, of success and, and life and kind of gets you started. And, and it's called A Leader's Heart. It's all back there. Anyway, yeah, I'll, I'll be glad to sign it. And I'm delighted to be with you. Let's, let's get to the lesson. Are you, are you ready to learn? Huh? You ready to go? Okay, look at your neighbor and, and say to them, uh, take good notes and learn something. Go ahead and tell them that, okay? okay. I'm going to talk to you today on, on covenant friendships. Having friendships that, that the world would envy because they have a depth to them that the world knows very little about. A, a world that is based on shortcuts and convenience and what's in it for me, uh, they, would, they, would, they would hunger and desire to have what we're going to talk about biblically today, covenant friendships. And C.S. Lewis, the great author, many of you read him, I'm sure, said, is any pleasure on earth as great as a circle of Christian friends by a fire? And the thesis of the lesson is just very, very simple. And the thesis is that most friendships fail. Uh, the, most, most friendships fail because of our lack of commitment to those friendships. In other words, we, we don't put the energy and the effort and have the level of commitment that we need for those relationships to be what they should. In fact, in, in my book, Winning with People, basically I talk, the thesis of this book is that we can almost point to all of our successes or almost all of our failures in life to the relationships in our life. Relationships that have done well and relationships that haven't done well. And we almost could go back and say, this was, this was a highlight, and, and, and in that highlight will be a relationship. This was a low time, and in that would almost always be a, a relationship. And the goal of our lesson is simple, and that is just to raise the commitment level and, and have us to go from convenience, what, what's just easy in the relationship, and it works as long as it's easy, to going to a covenant relationship where the commitment is deep and the commitment is right. Friendships are very important to all of us. When I was a, when I was a kid in the seventh grade, I, I, read, I read Dale Carnegie's book, How, when, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Um, how, how many of you read that book? I'm just, it's, it's hundreds of it. It's, it's a classic book. And, and I remember even taking, a, I, took, I took a course of how to win friends and influence me with my father. I, I remember I, it, before I got out of high school, I think, I, in fact, I took two courses. And, and I realized the importance of friendships and, and, and relationships. And then, and then I, I went into my pastorate. And, and I grew up in a home of, of a lot of unconditional love. So I, I grew up, my home was, was, I was very fortunate. I was much fortunate more than most people. It, it wasn't highly fractured and dysfunctional. And so... When I went into my first church, I was in for a, a major awakening when I, I, I found out that, that there were a lot of people, the good news, they were going to heaven. But the bad news is they, they, they had dysfunction in their life and they, they didn't have good people skills. And it was kind of like the, the good news is they're going to heaven, the bad news is they weren't going, going soon enough. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm thinking something I shouldn't tell you. Just a, somebody told me one time, I said, John, I can't believe what you say. I said, you'd be more impressed if you knew what I didn't say. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know what I'm talking about. Just there, there are some people that are high maintenance. And when we talk about friendships and, and making commitment to people, the first thing we think about is all the people that we really don't want to make a commitment to. And, and all the, I have a friend last parent who wrote a book on high maintenance of people and relationships, a very good book. And, and he described he described people that are hard to get along with, difficult to get along with. Uh, and, and I'm going to just start, I'm just going to go through this real quick. And as I go through it, uh, I'm going to do a little survey. And if you know somebody like this, just I'll have you raise your hand. First example, the critic, a person who just constantly complains and gives unwanted advice. How many of you know somebody like that, huh? 
You know, the way some people criticize you'd think they get paid for it. You know what I mean? Huh? Or the martyr, who is forever the victim. I mean, they're just racked with self-pity. And it's, oh, nobody knows the trouble. I How many of you know somebody like that? Huh? Okay, okay. How about the wet blanket? Uh, they're just pessimistic, and they're just automatically negative. Come on, huh? huh? I mean, they just, they're just, I mean, I mean, when they go to heaven, they're going to find dust on the streets of gold. Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Huh? They just start. Or, or the steamroller. This person is just blindly insensitive to others. They, a bowl in China shop. They just, uh, they just kind of run over and knock you down. They don't even know they knocked you down. They, they didn't even feel it. You know what I'm talking about? How, how many of you know somebody like that? Or, or the gossip. I don't even need to describe the gossip. How many of you know somebody that just, I mean, they just are, yeah, hello, okay. They, they just, they're just spreading rumors and, and secrets, the whole process. Or, or, or the control freak, the person just absolutely has to have control, and they go, well, let go, let be. How about the backstabber? Just, just kind of coming behind you and two-faced, or the cold shoulder one who disengages and pulls away from you. You can't really develop a warm relationship with them. Or somebody that's envious, they call them the green-eyed monster. They're just full of envy. Or the volcano, oh my. I mean, you just, you just, they just erupt. And you think, what happened? What did I say? What did I do? And, and they're just going on. You're just, you're, just trying to, you're just trying to figure out. And you just kind of, you pull away. Or, or the sponge, the one who just constantly says, give me, give me, give me. And they take it. But they, they never give out. Or the competitor, the one who always keeps score. You know somebody just always keeps score. Now, as I'm giving you all these high-maintenance people, I know what's happening to you. I mean, faces are coming up, aren't they, huh? I mean, and I'll say, and you know, oh, oh, yeah, oh, yes. Oh. Now, I, how many of you basically, all the high maintenance labels I just, how many, I mean, no, basically somebody in every one of those. You don't want to, come on, let's see this answer. Yeah, of course, of course. Now, now here's what's really wonderful. Are you not, are you not delighted that you're not like that? <laughs> Isn't this just fabulous? Huh? I mean, this message isn't for, it's for those people that didn't come. You know what I'm saying? I mean, aren't you, aren't you glad when I go through that, that you just, that's not you. No, no, no. In fact, you're thinking, you're thinking, boy, you know what? If I knew who's going to do this good of preaching, I'd have brought those people with me today. You know what I mean? I, I'd have lined them up. You, you sit in the envy chair. You sit in the gossip chair there. And, and, and aren't you just glad that, aren't you glad that, that just, no one would ever think that of you. How you doing? If you don't think you fall into any of those categories, you, you don't need this message. You need therapy. <laughs> I love this. I, I, I brought this with me. I have a sense of humor. And it, this is one of my favorite b b kind of relationship stories. So it's about a, a guy in a hot air balloon. And, and, and he's in a hot air balloon, and he realized that he's lost. So he reduced his altitude, and he spotted a woman below, and he descended a bit more, and he shouted, excuse me, can you help me? I promised a friend that I would meet him an hour ago, but I don't know where I am. And the woman below replied, you're in a hot air balloon, <laughs> and you're hovering about 30 feet in the air, and you're between 40 and 41 degrees north latitude and between 59 and 60 degrees west longitude. You must be an engineer, said the balloonist. I am, replied the woman. How did you know? Well, answered the balloonist, everything you told me was technically correct, but I have no idea what to make of your information. The fact is, I'm still lost. Frankly, you've not been any help at all. If anything, you've delayed my trip. The lady below looked at the balloonist and said, you must be in management. <laughs> I am, replied the balloonist, but how did you know? Well, said the woman, you don't know where you are or where you're going. <laughs> You've risen to where you are due to a large quantity of hot air. <laughs> You've made a promise which you have no idea how to keep, and you expect people beneath you to solve your problem. <laughs> the fact is you are exactly in the same place where you were before we met, but now somehow it's my fault. <laughs> Isn't that fun? We, and we've all, we've all met people. We, we, we've, all, we've all met people just like that. And, and, and let me tell you something. In, in, the, in the culture that we live in, it's highly dysfunctional. And there are a lot of hurting people. 
And, and one of the things that I've realized early in my life is that hurting people hurt people. It's, it's, it's like if I have a splinter in my hand and, and, and that splinter's caused infection, you don't have to touch the hand very hard. You just touch, get near the splinter where it was, and, and, and there's a reaction. It, it's because I, I, I'm hurting, I'm infected there. And, and when we're infected on the inside, there's a tendency for us to, to, to pull back and be, to, to be negative. And, 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 and in, in this culture, the tendency is that when we're treated that way, it's almost like, well, then I'm going to be that way also. And, and all of a sudden, relationships begin to kind of, kind of be dumbed down. And, and, and they begin to lower and basically say, well, I wasn't treated right, so I'm not going to give any commitment to that relationship. And, I, and, and that person, I mean, that, look what they did there, and, and I'm, I'm, just, I'm just not going to fool with that anymore. And there's just a real tendency for us to, to base our relationships and friendships on convenience versus covenant, the, the fact that we are committed to one another. In your lesson, I have three levels of friendship. There, there's the one, which is the service, surface uh, friendship, which, which is it's a surface friendship. It's just what it sounds like. It, it's the people that you see once in a while. You don't even know their name, but you say hi to them. You catch them at the grocery store, check out person. You know, and, hey, how you doing? Good to see you. You know, when you go back to the store, hi. You, 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 it, they're just surface relationships. When, when Margaret and I moved several years ago to Atlanta, um, and it was our first time, you know, being in the South, and, and we just would meet these people, and they'd say, hey, let's get together. I'd go home. i said, Margaret, my gosh, I, we're not going to have any time for ourselves. Everybody wants to get together. I mean, we're going to have, I mean, we just, it's just, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah let's do, I, hey, let's do lunch. Let's get together. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, man, oh. <laughs> I found that after all. That meant nothing. <laughs> it's, it's just, hey, hey, let's get together. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Do you know how much you mess them up if you say when? <laughs> oh, I didn't mean like when. I mean like I didn't mean like sometime. No, I mean just just, just let's get together. Yeah, yeah. Catch you later. Catch you later. Catch you. Yeah, catch you. How many of you got a face now? You're looking at again. <laughs> surface relationships, just surface relationships. And, and, and there's secondly, there are structured relationships. These are our, our relationships that we 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 encounter continually. But it's because we're, I mean, like they're at work, perhaps, work, and, or, or they're uh, maybe when we go to the, the, the soccer game of our kids, you know what I mean? We're, we're with the other parents, and, and they're structured. We, we get together, but we get together because there's a reason, and we aren't, it isn't the relationship the reason we get together. We're, we're going to a function in which it puts us together with people. And then thirdly, there's the solid and secure relationships. And covenant friendship is all about this, this kind of a friendship that, that's solid and secure. It's, it's, built on, it's built on unconditional love. It's, it's built on a standard of commitment that is biblical. It's, it's built on the example of Jesus Christ. It's built on, it's built on that kind of a level, a, a level of deep commitment. It's not, it's not on convenience. It's not on, well, if it works out, then we'll kind of see if we can maybe get this thing going. It, it, it's, it's a much better, it's a much deeper relationship. When I was in, it was my freshman year in college in, in my what, Psych 101 class, I had a prof who, who one day looked at us and said, you'll be lucky in your life if you can really have three very close, very good friends. And when I heard that statement, I thought, oh, that seems so cynical. And I, and I began to think of all the friends I have. And, and I didn't realize in my immature mind that what he was really saying is when it comes down to covenant friendships, when it comes down to relationships that are not based upon if it's easy or is it convenient, there, there, there are very few, very few relationships like that you, that you will have in your life. My heart was, my heart was greatly touched when I was... Uh, when I was 51, I had a heart attack, and um, and I had to go through I had to go through some changes in my life. And I, I have a wonderful friend, uh, Jack Hayford, who I, I was I was running way too heavy, and I was going to the doctors told me I needed to take about six months and just clear my schedule. And, and I just thought, man, how am I, how am I going to do this? I mean, I knew I had to do it, so. It's, but, but I, I realized the people I was going to let down. I realized the people that I said, yes, I'll come and speak for you. And, and, and I thought, oh, how do I tell them now I can't do this? And a, and a few days after I got home, I got a phone call from Jack. And, and he said, John, I, I know you, and I know what you're going through right now. He said, it's hard on you because you're going to have to let people down that you've promised. Not, yes, yes, yes. 
He said, could, could you give me the names of the people you've promised to speak for? And I'll call them. And let me call them for you. And, and, and what I'll do is, is, if they'll let me, I'll go speak for you. I'll, I'll take place. He said, I know I'm not you, but I'll take your place. Well, he's much better than I am, so it would be like, oh, John's sick, and you'll come, hey, oh, happy day, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> but he said, but he said give, give, me, give me the names. And, give, I, 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 and I said, well, no, I, I, no, and he said, he's let me do it. He said, I know. He said, just trust me on this. Let me take this off of you. I don't even want you to worry about it. And I said, well, Jack, you're busy, too. You speak, and you write, and you've got places to go. He said, I know that, I know that. But he said, I'll fit it in my schedule, and, and the ones I can't fit in my schedule, I... I I, they're friends. I'll, I'll tell them I'll come back a different time. He said, just let me carry this load and promise me that when you hang up, you will not think about it again. And I hung up, and I can still remember. I was in my bathrobe, and I, we, Margaret and I were having breakfast together. And I sat there at the table, and probably for 15 minutes, just tears flowed uncontrollably in my life. And I kept thinking... How do I deserve a friendship like that? And it was one of those moments in my life, and you've had these moments. This is nothing magic. You, you know exactly what I'm talking about, where, where, where you, the relationship gets to the place where you just, it, it just moves you because you know that it is not based on what's easy for that person or what's convenient for that person, but it's, that, it's, the, it's, a, it's a relationship and friendship that's built on commitment that I will not let you go. I will not leave you. I will not forsake you in this process. And the Bible, um, the Bible talks about, about this kind of friendship. And it says four things. Um, it says, one, few friends are true friends. In fact, in Proverbs 18, 24, it says, friends come and friends go, but a true friend sticks by you like family. Proverbs 17, 17, friends love through all kind of weather. Few friends are true friends. Secondly, friends will speak truth to you. The real friends will um, come into your life and they'll, they love you so much that they'll They'll, they'll be truthful. They'll be truthful. They'll wrap their truth in care and love, and that's what makes it work. Proverbs 27, 6 says, The wounds from a friend are worth it. Kisses from an enemy do you in. <coughs> Thirdly, friends, refreshes Proverbs 27, 9. A sweet friendship refreshes the soul. Wow. Boy, isn't that true? Isn't that true? Uh, I, I could sum up relationships and friendships almost in this very simple way. You are in your friendships right now. I am in my friendships either a plus to people or I'm a minus to people. I'm, I, I'm, either, I'm either every day adding value to them and, 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 and lifting them to a higher level or I'm every day pulling them down and subtracting. I'm, I'm every day in my friendships. I'm either making, I'm either making deposits in my friendships or I'm making withdrawals in my friendships. You know what I'm talking about? I'm either plus or minus. And, and this, this is a very key part of the lesson. I think when people are minuses, and we, I, you know what I'm talking about. You're talking about people that, you know, I mean, uh, if you're in a room and you just see them walk into the room, and I mean, you're, you know, maybe you're with people, you see them walk in a room, you just, you just, they're just, they just, they just drain you. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you just... As the closer they get to you, you just feel life being sucked <laughs> out of your body. Huh? And there are other people that walk in the room and you can hardly wait. You can hardly wait to see them because they're going to give you energy, because they're going to add value. They're going to be a plus. You, you know, you get a phone call and you look and see who's called you. How many of you ever looked and saw who called you and said, oh, I don't think I'm home right now. Huh? You know what I'm saying? I don't think now, now, why aren't you home right now? Because they're, 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 they're pulling energy out of you. You with me? Huh? 
Hey, are there other people? You're in a meeting, and, and you look at it, oh, my goodness. You say, excuse me, I got, I got an important call. And you pull out, go out in the hallway. Excuse me. There, there are pluses in your life. And, and here's the key. I think people that are minuses, I don't think it's intentional. I, I don't think most people wake up in the morning and say, I would really like to mess people's life up today. <laughs> I, I don't think they even know they mess your life up. I don't even think they realize they subtract. Are you with me? But we're selfish by nature. We're all selfish. I'm selfish. You're selfish. We're all selfish by nature. And we're always looking for the person to give to me. And, and what have you done for me? And what could you do for me? And, and I hope I have a good day. And I hope people treat me well. And, and, and it's all this inward. And, and I think a person that is focused on themselves, they, they, what they do is they don't realize, but they slowly chip away in relationships. And they slowly suck life out of the other people. But I know this. If you're going to have a covenant friendship, you're going to have to be intentional in it. It's a choice. It's a commitment. Because, because we're naturally selfish, it's not natural for me to, to give. And, and what can I do for you? And, 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 and how can I help you? It's not natural. And so therefore, therefore, I have to be intentional in that process. The fourth thing the Bible says is friends sharpen one another. In other words, they make each other better. As steel sharpens steel, friends sharpen one another. Now, now I have a question for you. Four things the Bible says about friendship that just kind of endear your heart. That, 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 that friendships that you and I can have, these covenant friendships, it, it allows us to stick together during difficulties. It allows us to speak truth into each other's life with love, to refresh each other and sharpen each other. Now, how many of you, how many of you would you like to have somebody that walk in your life that refreshes you, that sharpens you, that makes you better, that unconditional? How many of you like to have a friend like that? I mean, come on, talk to me. Hello. This, is, this isn't a relationship question. That's an IQ question. <laughs> you didn't raise your hand on that one. you got other issues we got to deal with. In my book, The 21 Irrefutable Law is the Law of Magnetism. The Law of Magnetism says something that is so important in relationships. It says, we attract who we are, not who we want. We attract, we, the kind of person we attract to ourselves is the kind of person that we are. Hey, and I, when I'm in the business community leadership, I'll, 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 t I'll talk to people all the time, and I'll say, what kind of people would you like to have in your company? And they'll, they'll say things, oh, well, I would like to have people that are disciplined. I'd like to have people with a good attitude. I'd like people with a good work ethic. I'd like to have people with integrity. And they got this wonderful list. And when they get down to the list, I look at them and say, is that you? Because if it's, if it's not you, you won't attract people to you like that. Wow. We attract who we are. Not who we want. So covenant friendships are a result of, number one, being the right person. It begins not with fixing someone else and getting them to raise their commitment level to us. It begins with us fixing ourselves. Who we are determines how we see other people. It starts with me being the right person. Margaret and I were having a conference together. We were doing Q&A. Lady looked at Margaret and asked her the question. She said, Margaret, did, man, I don't know where this question comes from. It wasn't even a marriage encounter. It was, a, it was really on leadership. She looked at Margaret and said, does John make you happy? And, and I didn't mind the question. I think I'm a, I'm, I think I'm a wonderful husband. <laughs> so I, in fact, I kind of thought, good question. <laughs> and, and Margaret looked right at her, and, 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 and she just, I mean, what she said just, it was like a shock. She looked right, right back at the lady. I mean, immediately, right, uh, right back at the lady, and she said, no, he, he doesn't make me happy. And everybody got real quiet. I mean, it's my conference. <laughs> and she said, and, and, and then no one expected that. I didn't expect that answer. I mean, I mean, and what bothered me about it is she, how quickly she answered. <laughs> it's like, I've been waiting for this question all my life. Thank you very much. I, I, I mean, like, did you plant that one out there? Oh. And, and so when she said it that way, I looked at her and I said, sweetheart, honey, explain yourself. Have you ever asked somebody to explain themselves and so they explain themselves and when they got done explaining themselves, you wish you wouldn't have asked them <laughs> to explain themselves? I said, honey, explain what you mean. She said, well, no problem at all. She, said, she looked at the lady and she said, I realized in the first six months of our marriage that he would never make me happy. <laughs> now, I don't know if you have the gift of discernment, but we're going down very quickly. <laughs> and then she said, because for the first six months, that's what I kept saying. He'll make me happy. He'll make me happy. 
I was teaching school. He had a little church. I'd come home from school. I'd say, we'll have dinner together. He'd call me from the hospital. Honey, somebody had a wreck. I'm, going, well, I'm not going to be home for a while. Oh, we lost that dinner. I'd have papers. It's great. She said, things just happen. Things happen. And I kept saying, he'll make me happy. He'll make me happy. He'll make me happy. And then she said, one day, she said, I realized the only person in this world that can make me happy is me. And the moment that I took responsibility for my happiness, she said, from that time on, John has added immeasurably to my happiness. <laughs> that was close. <laughs> what was Margaret saying? Margaret was saying, very simple, you got to be the right person. It's intentional. It starts with you. It doesn't start with fixing the other person. It doesn't start with waiting for the other person to go deep in their relationship or deep in their commitment to you. No, no, it starts with me making that commitment unconditionally. The second thing covenant relationships and friendships are a result of is committing time and energy to friendships. Again, in my book, Winning with People, that's here today, there's the gardening principle, and the gardening principle says all relationships need cultivation. Isn't that a fact? Don't all relationships need cultivation? You got to work, got to put a lot of energy. You know the difference between dating and marriage is, don't you? I mean, in, in dating, it's all about them. Oh, yes. It's all about them. When you're, when you're trying to win somebody over for yourself, it's all about them. I mean, when you go out to the car, you open the door. Here, sweetheart, let me help, let me help you in this. Just, and, 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 hey, oh, oh, please, let me, let me get your chair. Please, let me, let me do this. It's all about them. What can I do for you? Oh, how can I make you happy? How can I serve you? It's all about them. Get married. I see the train of coming. You get married, it all turns around. See, when you're dating, your, 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 your fiancé calls and says, Honey, oh, I, I'm at work and I forgot to stop at the dry cleaners. I got an appointment right after. And, oh, would you mind getting... Oh, sweetheart, it's no problem at all, honey. I'll be glad to do that. I know it's on the other side of Birmingham. I know it's going to take an hour and a half for me to go over and back. I realize I'm going to have to give up my lunch hour. But honey, sweetheart, I'm delighted to do that for you. Two months after you're married? What's wrong with your memory? <laughs> you need to write these things down. Is your leg broken? Can't you get over there? Did you forget where the dry cleaners was? See, what happens is this. Marriages begin to disintegrate when you and I fail to give them the energy they deserve and the time they deserve. And covenant relationships is a choice. It's a commitment to give time. It's a commitment to give energy. Let me wrap this up, this lesson up, by saying that God has two desires for you and me and in our life in the area of friendships. Number one is simply he wants us to have friendship with others. He designed us for that. He designed us for relationships. He looked at Adam without Eve and he said, it's not good for man to be alone. I, 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 want, I, want, to, I want to build community and I want to build relationships. That's... That's, that's, why, that's, why we come and come, that's why we come to Highlands on, to, to be together, not to forsaking the assembly of ourselves together. To, that, that's why we come together. God designed you for friendship and relationships. I wish I had my father with me. My father will be 90 next month, and he's amazing. He loves people. And when my, my mom passed away a, uh, a couple of years ago, and they had been married for 66 years, and, uh, and so my dad's in very good health, but we kind of wanted to get him in a, a wonderful kind of assisted care place where there would be medical help for him if he needed it in the whole process. So the three of us, our kids, we talked to him, and we, we, talk, we said, Dad, they're building one in Winter Haven, and when it's done, would you go? And he said, yes, he would. And, and so we kind of got him ready and got him prepared. And, and he would go over, and when he knew he was going there, he'd go over there while they were building it, and he'd go over, and he knew all the workers. I mean, he's, I mean, he's, he's Mr. Relationship. He had, and he'd go over, and he'd, see, I mean, he'd go in, and he'd bring me over, and we'd go to work, he'd meet, introduce me to everybody, and he said, now do a good job. Build, yeah, I'm going to live here, so you know, don't, don't, don't mess this thing up here, okay? We were having lunch one day, and he said, son, he said, uh, they, they've told me now that I can be the first one to move in. I said, well, that's nice, Dad, but is there a reason why you want to be the first one to move in? Oh, he said, son, he said, don't you realize old people are going to be coming to this place?
It's a major adjustment in their life, and they're not sure what's going to happen. And he said, I ask that I could be the first one to move in so that when the new people come in, I could be at the front door. And I could meet him, and I could say, hi, I'm Melvin Maxwell, and I, I just want you to know I live here, and we're going to be friends, and it's going to be okay, and everything's going to work out just fine. He says, I just want to be, I just want to let him know it's going to be okay. I want to be the first one, and I, I, I'm, I'm sitting at this lunch table listening to my father. And he said, isn't it wonderful that, uh, isn't it wonderful? He said, as I'm getting older, I love people more now than I love them even 20 years ago. Isn't it amazing? As you get older, you just love people more. And I said, Dad, that's not true. Come on now, talk to me. I know a lot of people that are getting older, but they're not getting better. Maturity doesn't always come with age. Sometimes age comes alone. That was good. I got to write that one down. (laughs) My dad understands covenant friendship. He understands that if you want a relationship that's going to be what it needs to be, you are the first to move in, and you are at the door, and you do shake hands and say, hi, my name is Melvin Maxwell, and it's going to be all right. You are the one who initiates. You're the one that gives it the time. You're the one that gives it the energy. You're the one that gives it the effort. And the second thing, the thing I close now is the second desire for God is for him to have a relationship with you. It amazes me that a holy God would want a relationship so badly with sinful mankind that he would leave heaven and he'd come to earth in the form of flesh and live with us and die for our sins. Bow your heads with me, would you please? With every head bowed and every eye closed, just have a simple question to ask you, and then I want to pray. As I've talked about friendships today, without any question, sometimes our heart is just kind of stretched out to this covenant idea of having love so deep and so wonderful that it's unconditional, it's by choice, not by convenience. To have a friend that really sticks closer to us than a brother to be cared for and loved even at our worst moments. And the pattern, the example of that, of course, is Jesus. In his life, we see and feel unconditionally loved. And Jesus said, I want to have a relationship with you. I want to come into your life. And he said, I want it so badly that I'll do the effort and I'll do the initiation. I'll come into this world and I'll live here and I'll die for your sins. And he said, I stand at your heart's door and I knock. I would like to come into your life. And then he tells us this tremendous promise that if we hear his voice and if we open our heart, he said, I will come in. Holy, eternal God coming into our life and giving us a covenant relationship. And I know that this morning, not only in this campus, but all the campuses at Highlands, and even online, online, there are some of you that are saying, I would give anything to know God like that and have God in my life like that and have him unconditionally living and caring and loving me. So his heads are bowed and eyes are closed, regardless of what campus you're on. If you would like to know God in that way, in a moment I'm just going to pray. I'm just going to you just stay in your seats, but I'm going to pray. But if you would like to, if you would like to have that kind of relationship with God, I want you to do me a favor right now. I want you to raise your hand up just all over the auditorium. That's right. Just raise them up high. And just keep them up for me. Just keep them up for a moment. Just, just raise them up high. There are several of you. You got your hands up. Just keep them up for a moment. And just, I, I'm, I'm just watching everyone else's heads bowed, eyes closed. I would like to have this kind of relationship with God. And you just raise your hand up and just say, John, that, that sounds so good to me. Now, you that, have just, you that have your hands up right now, there are dozens of you in this auditorium, I'm sure, on the other campuses also. If you have your hand up, only you, no one else, just look up at me, would you please? That's right, just look up at me. Yeah, good, yeah. 
I'm going to pray with you now, okay? And as I pray, I want you to open your heart to God and ask Christ to come into your life. Father, I want to thank you for those who raise their hands. They really want a relationship of knowing that their sins are forgiven and knowing, God, that you unconditionally love them and they are eternally yours. And you said if we would open our heart's door, you would come in. So, Lord Jesus, right now, that's what we do. We open our heart's door right now. And you that had your hands raised as you're in your seat, just say to God, God, I, I open my heart now. And I ask you to come into my life as my Savior. And, and from this moment on, I'm going to commit myself to you. I know that you've already done that to me. But I'm going to commit myself. I'm making a choice. I'm making a choice this morning to have a covenant relationship with you. I thank you, God, for what you're doing just now in the lives of those that are praying that prayer. This is the beginning of a wonderful, wonderful friendship with you. And we're grateful in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you very much.